the day the Lord has made. Let all the earth rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we gather today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners and forgave their sins. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the abbot, St. Benedict, an outstanding master in the school of divine service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before love of you, we may hasten with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with a train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above, each of them had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two they veiled their feet, and with two they hovered aloft. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongues from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Peter said to Jesus, We have given up everything and followed you. 
what will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on, on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, Saturday, July 11, we celebrate the memorial of Saint Benedict, the founder of the monastery, the monks, the Benedictines. His picture is right there on the last corner there, Saint Benedict. Saint Benedict is famous for his rule, the Benedictine rule, ora et labora, prayer and manual labor. Prayer because during the time when the Benedictine monastery was established, not only them but many monasteries had been established and founded away from the towns or from the city centers. In fact, in the desert. That's why we have desert monks. Even the monks of the Benedictines here in Los Angeles, in Baliermo, they are nestled, settled right there in the Baliermo uh, plains, in the Baliermo desert. Now the reason for this is to escape the world to escape the world and view the world from afar so that in that way they can see better according to the minds of the early monks because if they are in the world they cannot focus and they cannot focus on the Lord and what the Lord is trying to tell them. So during the time when the Benedictines were established they had to settle in far, far away desert land or in the mountains, hidden away from people, just to pray, just to pray for the world, for what is happening in the world today. During the lockdown, if you come to think of it, it's a desert experience. It's a desert experience in the sense of people are away. Stay home. They're not supposed to congregate. They're not supposed to interact with anybody. Not even members of their own family. If they are to take seriously the commands or the prescription or the guidelines, experiencing a desert you don't have to go all the way to Las Vegas desert. But even in your own house, you can experience and have a desert experience. Because desert means detachment, away from, and view it from where you are. So for those of you who are locked down or in your house, it's kind of a desert experience. Hopefully, you make this opportunity to view the world from where you are and then offer prayers. And that's exactly what Benedict has in mind when he established the monastery of the Benedictines away from the city and in the desert to be able to focus and concentrate on that situation and ask God in prayer how can they be of help to them 
you know, the monks can be very much away from, you know, from the city or from people. They don't have television. During the time, they don't have even radio. But they're the most well-informed people in the world. You know, the nuns in Baguio, you know, the Pink Sisters, they are so close, in clausura, cloistered. And yet they know what is going on around the world. You know why? People, because people go to them, bring a piece of paper, and write their intentions to pray for. So the nuns receive them daily. They receive all these intentions to be prayed for. And they know what is going on in the world. Although they don't have television, no newspapers, no radios, they're able to know what is going on in the world through these people who are asking them to pray for this or that. Ora. According to the Benedictine monk, Ora is the number one rule, prayer. The second rule is Ora et Labor, meaning manual labor. In the desert, in order for the monks to survive and to live and have a life, they have to till the land, manualia. Manual labor. They grow their own food. That's why they have gardens at the back of the monastery. And whatever space of land that can be planted or can be tilled and can be cultivated, they plant vegetables. Now the reason for this manualia or labora is that when the hands are busy, according to the mystics and the monks, the heart is free for God, which is true. If you're doing something, you know, your hands are busy, if you're cultivating, or in the Philippines, where there is no, in the seminary where we were formed, there were no washing machine. You wash your own clothes with your own hands. And it's true. If you put seriously manualia and wash your own clothes with your hands, your hands is, are busy, but your heart is free for God. In fact, it was during those moments when your hands are doing something, even sweeping or cutting the grass, which we do on a Saturday like this, manualia. There is wisdom there. That is why the Lord gave us the strength, the body, the muscles, the hands, to work. Not for our own sake. But we lose that now because people would like to do something in order to be productive to produce. But during the times of the monasteries, manualia, labora, agricultural work is an exercise to free the minds, I mean the heart, the minds from away from the things that they're doing and let the heart be free for God. Try it if you have a garden. Till the soil. Keep your hands busy. In this time of the pandemic, people are learning a lot. Those who do not know how to bake, they know how to bake now. Those who do not know how to cook, because they have other work during the, before the pandemic, now they are proud that they are able to cook and serve their family with food that they cook. During the time of pandemic, the lockdown, a lot of people have learned a lot. 
they did not know they can be teachers, that they can teach their children. But it seems patience is running out. Now they all would like to go back outside, go to school, send the children to school, and have them be babysit by teachers. Now for nine, for four months already, they are babysitting their children, and it seems that they cannot stand it. It's their children. It's nobody else's children. It's their children. It's God's gift to them to take care and trust it to them. Now that's why some of them are really aching to send the kids back to school. Let the teachers be their babysitter and they will work, earn a living. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Benedict is teaching us simple lessons about our faith and about our life with God. Ora et labora. Prayer and labor. Manual labor, if you may. And so today, let us not belittle the little things that we do in the house, sweeping or washing or cleaning or dusting off. Because when your hands are busy, your heart is free for God. Amen. Please stand and let us now offer our prayers. In every petition, let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church and her leaders may effectively call all who are burdened to come to Christ, in whom they will find true rest, we pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For all who are facing difficult decisions, that the Holy Spirit may give them wisdom and courage, we pray to the Lord. That the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead may purify our departed brothers and sisters of all their sins, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray together with our patron, St. Catherine of Siena, for all our petitions, for the intentions of Romani Abe Singhi and Aster and Randy Wilson, for the souls of Maria I. Bu, for Isabel Nunez. For all this, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, your dominion is over all the earth by the power of your Spirit, heart, hear the prayers that we make in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed 
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly, Lord, upon these holy offerings, which we make in honor of St. Benedict, and grant that by following his example in seeking you, we may merit the gifts of unity in your service and of peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us your signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. This is the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Receive the prayers and intentions we offer, especially the intentions of Romani Abesinghi, of Aster and Randy Wilson. Receive the prayers we offer especially for Monsignor Jim Gell, Father Boyet Gatbonton. Receive the prayers of Fred Taronas and family. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for Maria Aibu, Isabel Nunez, Maria Espectacion Puente, De Rivera, for George Asmar, and all who have died in your mercy. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Benedict, with Saint Catherine of Siena, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of Saint Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer to Our Lady of Mount Carmel on the fourth day. O most beautiful flower of Mount Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, blessed mother of the Son of God, Immaculate Virgin, assist us in this our necessity. O star of the sea, help us and show us herein you are our mother. O Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of heaven and earth, we humbly beseech you from the bottom of our heart to succor us in this necessity. There are none that can withstand your power or show us herein you are our mother. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. When you gave us, gracious lady, the scapular as our habit, you called us to be not only servants, but also your own children. We ask you to gain for us from your Son the grace to live as your children in joy, peace, and love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a nice day.